this installment, we are going to be on a guided tour of a Boeing 747-400 that flew for Qantas Airlines for a bit over 25 years, having entered service in 1989. She was the 12th 747-400 off the production line, by the way. Our guide in this tour is John Kelly, a former Qantas employee who works as a docent at the museum. Uh, 747 is having a paint job, as you can see. Um, quite a big job to do, giving a paint job. Um, so this one, Qantas got this one in 1989. Yes, I know many people weren't even born in 1989, but there you go. <laughs> that means um, one, of, one of the first 400s then. One of the first 400s, and this one was in the Guinness Book of Records because it flew non-stop from London to Sydney. It was the longest non-stop flight by a commercial aircraft at the time, 20 hours and 10 minutes. Um, I was there in 1989 when it arrived and there were people saying, it's not going to make it, it's not going to make it. <laughs> anyway, it made it. Um, it didn't have a full passenger load. It couldn't probably couldn't do, do it with a full passenger load. <laughs> And they used something apparently called high density fuel. Super cold. Yeah. Yep. So, um, yeah, so it, it, it was able to, to do it. Um, so this was uh, one of the, as you, the gentleman said, one of the first of the 400 series. I know it means nothing to you, but um, the, the 747 400 series, you could tell from the earlier ones because it had little wing tips. See the little wings that stick up the end of the end? Yeah. And, uh, so this one arrived, and the other thing that was really exciting about this aeroplane when it first arrived, it had it had this feature that even I couldn't spell. It was called a computer. <laughs> computer. <laughs> yep, and it was uploaded via floppy disk. <laughs> it had floppy disks, mm -hmm. which you guys probably never heard of a floppy disk. But the computer took the job of a man called a flight engineer. And there was a man called, and the same man was always a man, it was never a woman, it was a man, it was a man's job. The man sat behind the pilots, he was called a flight engineer. And he sat with a big panel and he moved the fuel around and he did the air conditioning and the hydraulics and the electric, did all these jobs. And this wonderful thing called a computer on this airplane <laughs> took his job. And over the next 15 years, all these flight engineers were retired and never came back again. Um, and it was, the computer was a two megabyte computer. <laughs> in those days, we didn't even know about gigabytes. <laughs> Nobody knew what a gigabyte was in those days. Megabytes and kilobytes. So two megabyte computer with a 20 megabyte memory. And it filled a suitcase, yeah. all the electronics, which are under the floor under, here. Yep. So um, well, we can go over here and have a little look at you like. At the the fifth engine mount. Fifth engine mount, yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Everyone's got it. <coughs> Ferry mount for engine. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, although this is a full, you know, as you can see, the engine's there, but on rare occasions, they need to transport an extra engine to another place. The last time it was used, I think, it was about 2008. One of them sent an extra engine to and if you're the 
Virgin Orbital, that became the launch mount for the rocket. Yeah. Uh, and you can imagine when the, the pilot is flying. Uh, Virgin Galactic. That's, that's where they were mounted. Mm -hmm. it makes sense to use it. Using something that's already there, mm -hmm. not around it. Now, what do you, you guys probably know all this, but when you're at the airport, you don't get to see where the wheels go. These wheels go up in here. Yeah. Up the That's impressive. Um, it's mechanical origami. Yeah. Origami. <laughs> you, don't, you don't see this much anymore, but <clears throat> from time to time, you get people, in, usually in poor countries, who think they're going to get a free flight. And they might crawl up and hide in here somewhere. Uh, there's not much room. And they're going to die. I worked at London Heathrow Airport for a while. Twice when I was at London, what happened was, as the aeroplane was coming into land and all these things opened up and the wheels went down, usually a young boy, fell out, landed in someone's backyard. So because it's minus 50 degrees when they're flying, minus 40, minus 50, so you're pretty much, and there's no breathable oxygen. It's higher than Mount Everest, so the chances of surviving are close to zero, so they usually die. That's where they hide if they, if they were going to do it. Um, some, some places like in Africa and stuff, they don't have proper fences around the airport, so people can sneak in. Okay. Um, the sort of thing people ask questions, how many people does this carry? 370, this aeroplane, 370. Um, how much does it weigh? About 400 tons, 397 tons, but we'll say 400 tons. How much fuel does it carry? Um, 230,000 liters, or yeah, about that, 230,000 liters. Where does it carry the fuel in the wings? Yeah. And this is a long reach, right? So they have the extra tanks added yeah. in the baggage hold? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and how much fuel does it use? About 10,000 liters an hour. Somebody told me that works out to be about three liters a second. <laughs> That's a big fuel bill. Yeah. Um, Qantas ordered these with Rolls-Royce engines because they're about 1% more fuel efficient than the uh, General Electric and Pratt & Whitney ones, which are the American ones. Yeah. Um, this airplane uh, uh, cost the new price in 1989 was 250 million US dollars, and in 2015, when it retired, it was worth five million dollars a scrap. <laughs> it was going to go off to Arizona, to that scrapyard, yep. but Qantas donated it to us. Um, they will go inside and have a little look at it. Ron? Ron? <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> yes, just turning on the lights. <laughs> Give you a flashbacks of. Uh, mm -hmm. It's about as roomy as when we flew over. Yeah, actually, just about the same. Sing along, Winslow. That bridge over troubled water. Sooner than I planned. We've got a 15 hour flight coming up oh, wow. on Monday. Okay. <laughs> um, so, um, this is a, a three class 
airplane, economy class, mm -hmm. premium economy, which is slightly better than this, which we'll see in a minute, and business class in the nose, and more business class upstairs. There's no first class on this. They took first class out mm. because on certain routes, they know that they don't, there's not much demand for first class. So um, the first class seats were taken and out and replaced with business class. Um, this airplane used to go to Africa quite a lot. So Africa means tourists, okay. not first class. Hol people. Holiday market. Yeah, mainly economy type situation. Yeah. Um, the other thing that was really exciting about this airplane was this was the first aircraft that Bodice had where you had your own little in-seat videos. Now you might say, look at that and go, yeah, that's pretty normal, right? Well, it wasn't, it wasn't until then. 1989. When you had your own, you could watch what you wanted. So the next question is, well, what did you do before that? Mm. Well, before that, there was a projector that came out of the ceiling here, <coughs> a film projector, <laughs> uh, projected onto a white screen, which is where you're standing there, a movie, a movie. One movie during the 14-hour flight to LA, <laughs> you got one movie. And if it wasn't your kind of movie, well, oh, and yeah, the old, fall asleep. the old uh, sound sound tube headphones. Yeah. And then we had these wonderful in-seat videos. You could watch a few different things by yourself. Right, it was so exciting. Yeah. Um, How many flights to a plane like this have done? Thousands. Yeah. yeah uh, I think probably. someone worked it out and they said it, it would have been back to the moon and back fifty times or something, or you know, in, in distance, but. Um, as these guys will tell you, they don't measure them in it's hours. It's hours. hours and cycles. And, yeah, cycles, landing, landing and takeoff, and hours in the air. Yeah, the uh, the one that we flew on from uh, London to Cape Town had a hundred and forty thousand hours on it. Well, roughly about twenty-five years old. This was about twenty-five years old when it reached the end of its useful life, and as I said, would have gone up to be scrapped. When you start worrying about stress and fracture. Yeah. Um, so um, one of the big questions that people always want to ask me about is the black boxes. You know, they've seen it all in the movies. Yeah. Where, where are these black boxes? And I, the first thing to remember is the black boxes are not black. They're, they're actually they're bright orange. Yes. yes. And, and, fire. and they live <laughs> up here in the tail. Um, why do they live in the tail? Because airplanes do not reverse into mountains. Someone <laughs> said to me. It's, think of it as the rest of the plane's a crumple zone. Yeah, <laughs> the people in first class are going to die first. <laughs> but you're all first. <laughs> so they're up here in the tail, and um, uh, Qantas have a system, because the crew are going to be on duty for a long time, 16, 18, mm -hmm. 20 hours that we'll be on duty, we need to rest. Mm -hmm. So up here, when you come around the corner, you can't actually go up. There's a set of stairs in the corner, and up above the, the toilets, there's actually a room with eight bunk beds where the crew will rest. Yep. Two or three hours after takeoff, everyone's had a, had a drink and something to eat. The crew, the crew will divide into half, and up to eight crew members will go up and lie down and sleep if they, um, for two or three hours, and then they'll swap over. Yep. Um, I'm not allowed to tell you about um, Qantas male cabin crew getting passengers drunk and taking female passengers, taking them up there for entertainment purposes. I can't tell you those stories. <laughs> never happened. Never happened. So um, that's that. So if you want to come around and you can have a little look at the stairs. They're not very uh, big stairs. Oh, no. Oh, boy, all the same everywhere. Yeah, right? <laughs> this smells less like pee than the last one. Yeah. It's like pretty steep. Yeah, it's different than the ship. Okay. I'll get to cheat. 
Sometimes we have people who um, book a wing walk tour. They pay a bit extra at the front desk and they get to walk on the wing. And they get on this ladder, open this door, and they go out. And we put a harness on them with a rope so that we don't want them to fall off. So that's what this ladder is for. If people book a wing, wing walk tour and they go out and stand on a couple of weeks ago, we had a man who booked the wing walk tour. He didn't realize he had a fear of heights. And he got out there and he started shivering and shaking and we had to bring him back. He was worried about... Yeah. Well, the falls out your problem. It's that sudden stop at the end. Yeah. Curse you, gravity! Seems pretty cool. Yeah, don't change. <laughs> Same all paper. Slightly premium. Oh, cool. Yeah, there we go. Here's, here's a premium. If you're, um, if you're ever watching a movie or something on TV, in the movie, they're, they're on an airplane or you know, an aircraft, whatever is happening in the movies, they're on an aircraft doing something. Well, they actually come here and make movies. Oh. They actually rent this from us and they take the seats out of the middle because they've got lights, you know, and cameras and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, and, uh, not long ago they were here making a commercial for yogurt. Mm. I don't know what it happens okay. anyway. <laughs> a couple of years ago, they were here making a commercial for M&M's, you know, the little chocolate M&M's. Yeah. And the camera was where you're standing, and they, they were, that's it there. Did you ever see, you can see it on YouTube. That's where they made it, and that's the actual, the actual little guys that, that they used. Oh, yeah. They yeah, yeah. They so, yeah. They were used snacks on the airplane, and they're like, why? When we hop up, we're pretty sure they won't use the Offline, touch it. One more hours to go. <laughs> <laughs> so this is um, this is this is glass. Um, the flight deck is above our head. That's where the pilots will be sitting. We're going upstairs to have a look in a minute. And under the floor here is called the what the pilots call it, the MEC, Main Equipment Center. And th those computers we were talking about live under the floor here. <coughs> yeah. And there's also access through the nose wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so is that a Kurt Russell movie where they crawl in under the, from the stealth? That's from the... Yeah. Uh, um, I know, uh, so this what was is it a, in... Uh, oh, Steven Seagal. Yeah. And yeah, they come up from underneath. Yeah, the yeah the, 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 if you lift the rug, you can actually access it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, uh, these are the, the people who are business class. As you can see, the, it's a semi semi life flat bed. These are quite old, these seats, but the newer ones are even better than that, obviously. And they get proper cutlery and crockery and... 
actual glass, not, not plastic. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you come from? So, real glass. Um, yeah. so you'll, real you'll stick now? You'll probably have to. Yeah. 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 I wouldn't give my wife a real nice yeah. sit next to me. <laughs> <laughs> How do we get upstairs? Yeah. Yeah, upstairs. 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 Yeah, that's really cool. My one flight in 747 like this, I was packed in with a thousand Marines. Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I stayed in a 747 in uh, Stockholm twice. Okay. The Jumbo Stay Hotel. Uh huh. Cozy. Okay, so it slides down. Yeah. Yeah, these are 20 years dated. Looks cozy though. Looks better than what we got. Better than the. Okay. But it actually slides down right away. Right. Mm -hmm. So all the frequent flyers. Yeah, I'm not Mary's height. A lot of this up the windows. What's that? Besides, I mean, it's not very big windows. That's pretty well. Yeah. Like. How much you get in there? Center changed in an instant, everything mm -hmm. changed, yeah. and uh, since then, of course, um, you couldn't they, they, you couldn't yeah. get up there during the flight. And uh, I would have to, if I wanted to go up during the flight, I have to get on the telephone here and call the captain, call the pilots, and tell them who I was and give them the password because there's a secret password you have to tell them. And then uh, I would go up. And then there's two cameras there, which never existed before, and they'd see me, and if they didn't know it was me, they wouldn't open the door. And then and once sure they rec alone, right? recognized me, and then I had to have another guy with me as a backup in case somebody pushed you or whatever it is. So there'd be two, one as a backup and one would go in, and they'd open the door electrically from the inside, and then let, let, let me in. Before that, you just went in. Before that World Trade Center thing mm -hmm. happened, mm -hmm. okay. so the world changed in an instant, yeah. right? Yeah. That from that day onwards, and now there are no. We don't take children to the flight deck to no. see the captain flying anymore. That's all finished. Even kids. Yeah, yeah. It's all. It's all gone. Yeah. Did you guys want to go and have a little look at the front? Yeah. Um, come on. You want to go through? That, that'll, take, that'll take you up. You can have. I'll, I'll, I'll follow behind you. You want to come behind me? 
Um, we have a retired 747 captain here often. He's not here today, but um, he loves to tell people all about it. And then he, uh, when the 747s were retired, he went on to the A380. Uh, uh, he's retired now. He's got a big farm. <laughs> um, so they tell me that on the 747-300s and earlier, the flight deck looked like that. And there were apparently 838 different switches and controls and dials. Yeah. <laughs> and when this computerized version came on, it went down to 338. So 500 switches disappeared between there and there. Yeah because of the computer, <laughs> the two megabyte computer. Well. Yeah. So um, when this thing is flying, um, there are normally four pilots, the captain, first officer, and two second officers. Um, the second officers are fully qualified pilots. They're absolutely able, able to do everything but they're not allowed to. Um, they can only fly whilst accompanied by either the captain or the first officer. And they don't do landings and takeoffs until they accumulate a certain number of hours. Um, and uh, so that, that's how it works. So when the captain's having a rest um, and one second officer will be resting, otherwise it will be the first officer and one second officer. And there's a little bunk bed to, to the left there, which you can't actually see. And there's another little bunk bed over there at the top of the stairs for them to um, rest. Pilots need to rest. So for those long flights. For the long flights, because Sydney, Los Angeles is 14 hours. Sydney, Dallas, 15, 16 hours. Yeah. So, Johannesburg, yeah. All right. So we're finished with this one. We'll go and look at something else. This is just a galley for food. And they were used to fly from uh, <coughs> San Francisco to London. Oh. So long flight. And